More evidence mounts for a chilly December and more evidence that the models aren't seeing the actual cold in the east out in time. Plus, a lot of snow is going to fall for many locales across the United States over the next two weeks. A lot of rain's coming as well as the active pattern continues and... Yeah, another X-class solar flare and subsequent coronal mass ejection are on the way. We'll have all of that and we'll test your weather IQ to see how that's holding up on today's video. Oh yeah, my friends, Christmas and the holidays are coming. And if you're a coffee drinker, Cold Rain has a recommendation for you that you're absolutely going to love. So stick around for that. In the meantime, in yesterday's video, I made the case for a chilly December in the east and a fast start to winter. And what I'm about to show you further strengthens that case. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button right down below, give the content a like, and leave a comment. Let me know where you're commenting from, but most importantly, if you have a prayer request, anything I can be in prayer about, please put it down there. And certainly if you have a question, leave that as well. I read and respond to all of those. All that helps us grow, and I want to thank you to all the new members that have signed on over the past couple of weeks as we're growing rapidly. So thank you for that. But uh, what you're looking at here is a big map of the United States with blue and orange colors. What does this mean? Well, what you're seeing is an analog, and this is a combination of several years historically that have parameters that match what is expected to happen over the upcoming winter, in particular the month of December. And the parameters that we're looking at here in this map is essentially two things. Winters previously that had a cool ENSO, which is a La Nina, which we are in, La Nina is weak and it's going to fade through the winter, but right now we're in a La Nina. And the other parameter is the MJO tracking through certain phases. I talked about the MJO yesterday extensively. Go back and watch that video. It's just an area of convection that circles the globe around the equator and where it's at determines how, what influence it has on the jet stream and thus weather patterns. And so what we're looking at is uh, on this map is an upper air 500 millibar height anomaly map of those five years all combined together that match the upcoming expected trek of the MJO. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So this is combining all of those years together and you see a big ridge over Alaska. The models are supporting this in their projections over the next couple of weeks, building this big ridge, blocking here in Greenland. They're showing that as well. And then eventually that evolves to a big trough in the east. There's your height anomaly, your low height anomaly in the east, heading out into the Atlantic and ridging along the west coast. That dumps a lot of cold air into North America and sends it into the eastern United States. If the upcoming year plays out historically how these these historical analogs did. My friend Grit Eater put this together. He's a wonderful analyst. He looks at a lot of different historical data and comes up with these analogs and the surface temperatures. These are the two meter temperature anomalies and you can see here, look at this, lots of blue colors. These are minus four, minus five, minus six below normal for the month of December for analogs that match what is expected over the upcoming month. I hope that makes some sense. Warm out west. That doesn't mean you're going to have a warm winter all winter long out west, but for the month of December, the strongest case is made for cooler weather as you head east. And here are the MJO progressions of those years. You can see coming out of seven in November through December, all the way in toward January, tracks through phase eight, one and two, and the same again for the next year, which is 2000, and then 1995, and so on and so on and so on. Grid Eater did all of this research Search, put it on our website, southernweather.com. We look at this all the time. Georgia Weather is another good analyst, and he puts together a lot of data, and he's looked at another parameter. We looked at this yesterday, the upcoming stratospheric warming event, okay? That means the stratosphere way up high, where way over where we live, the next layer of the atmosphere up. There's a stratospheric polar vortex that is going to warm and be disturbed and displaced if the model projections are correct. And if that turns out to be the case, there have been five years in history that have had a major stratospheric warming event between the dates of November the 24th and December the 7th, where this one is expected to be. And what did they look like? Well, those Decembers look fairly chilly here in the east, don't they? You see some greens, that's minus two to minus three, then a little bit warmer in the Midwest and the plains and back into the Rockies in the West. Here's what January looked like though. Look at this, really getting cold up here in the plains back East as well. And February, it backs off a little bit. So if we just went by stratospheric warming, well, we'd see a cool winter in the East as well. Now, not every year is the same and certainly different things play out, but there's a lot of mounting evidence 
You can't look at one thing in isolation. You look at the whole ball of wax, and that tells us that at least in December, we have a decent shot of having a pretty fast start to winter in the east. I hope that is it helps you understand that. If you get a chance, come check out our website, southernweather.com. A lot of this analysis is just um, displayed, researched, and displayed every single day. We have real-time threads that talk about all this stuff. Now, this is the current projection of the MJO from the European weeklies. And look at this. We're going to meander around in phase six. That's warm in the east. That's why we're going to see some warm weather over the upcoming uh, couple of uh, weeks or so, get into phase seven, and then eventually track into phase eight as we move through mid-December, and then hopefully get on into phase one and two. You can see this sort of diagram in these phases, eight, one and two, seven, eight, one and two are more favorable for cold penetrating the central and then eventually eastern United States. And of course, if you want winter storms, you need cold weather. If you hate cold and weather, this is not a great forecast for you. So different models project different things and they go out to different links, but the European extended shows a favorable track for the MJO. So that's what I've got for you in terms of December. Now we're going to take a look at the upcoming forecast for the next couple of weeks. See who's going to get snow, who's going to get rain, and we'll wrap up with space weather. And I've got one more thing to show you in terms of the models, in terms of what they're seeing in the east, because they ain't seeing it right. Right now, I've got your weather IQ coming up right this minute. All right, today's weather IQ question is about space weather. We've had a lot of space weather recently, and we've got a little bit more to talk about coming up here in just a minute. But here is the question. Let's see if you know this. What is the Southern Hemisphere equivalent of the Northern Lights called? Is it the Aurora Australis? Is it the Aurora Polaris, Aurora Maximanus, or Aurora Solaris? Okay, hard to say all that together. But if you know the answer, type it in the comment section below. If you don't, just wait till the end of the show and I'll let you know what it is then. But don't peek and then come back and write in the answer. Just take a guess. Put it down there. See if you know it. Right now, we're going to take a look at the upcoming weather pattern and see what that has in store for us. I'm shooting this scene for the third time because things keep dying on my computer. Anyway, what is this that I'm looking at? Well, this is a trend GIF. What is the heck is a trend GIF? Well, it's an animation of the last several runs of a model centered on a specific point in time. We're looking at the upcoming period in the Northeast where it's going to get cold next week. And we're looking at it from a multitude of runs starting way back when the models were looking at it way far in advance to where they're looking at it now only 72 hours in advance. Okay, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. What it does is gives us an idea of how accurate the model was when it was looking at it from 10 days out versus now it's looking at it from three days out. And so I want to show you a couple of things here on this model run. Okay, focus on this area here. This is blocking in green. Look at this. This is the last 30 runs of the GFS. It has done a pretty good job identifying that block. It has stayed in the pretty much the same location over the last 10 days. Now look out here on the West Coast. Look at this. Troughing off the West Coast, we've had an active storm track and troughs have been, the system has been coming in. Look at that. Well, that's that's pretty good, right? It's, it's kind of kept it in place. Now watch this. Look at the Northeast. I want you to focus on here that big blue blob is as we get close in. Look, there's some blue up there, but it's all over the place. You got reds and oranges and stuff poking in, and only until we got over the last several days did it start seeing this big trough here in the east. This has happened over and over and over. And the reason I'm showing you this is because the GFS and all these other models too, the European Ensemble, here's the European Ensemble. Look at this as well. It does a good job with the block. It does a good job with the trough of the west coast. Pretty good job here in the center of the country, although could do a bit better, but as we get into the center, particularly in the east, it did not do a great job with this block and the magnitude of this, I meant this low anomaly and the magnitude of it. But as we get closer to game time, it's starting to see the magnitude of the cold. This is something that we're going to watch this winter because it is not doing a good job picking up the cold that's actually going to be in place out in time. So that could mean that when we look at some of these two-week projections out, maybe it's a little bit too warm in the east. It doesn't always have to be the case, but in currently over the past couple of weeks, it's certainly been the case, maybe even the past month or so. So I wanted to show you that just to give you an idea of it. Here's the alerts map. Not a lot going on in the east. Red flag warnings, some dense fog warnings, uh, and we've got uh, some flood watches up here for Southern California, even some winter storm warnings for the Sierra Nevada. So it's going to snow. It's going to rain out here. And as a matter of fact, if we take a look at the jet stream, here is the jet stream over the next a couple of weeks, according to the European ensembles. The GFS is largely in agreement with the 
general pattern here. You can see these bright colors, the jet stream represented by these bright colors and dips in the jet stream are where you're going to find your biggest, most vigorous storm activity. And not a lot going on across the lower 48. Got a few uh, impulses working through the northeast. Going to keep you uh, unsettled with some showers and snow in the higher elevations the next couple of days. But the bulk of the weather is out here along the west. And you're going to see these systems kind of track through the center of the country. And maybe try to amplify a little bit as they get on into the east. But look what happens as we get on through the weekend. Sunday into Monday, we get a little low pressure kind of working through the center of the country. Could bring some unsettled weather into the uh, you know, central plains into the mid uh, Mississippi Valley in the southeast as we get toward next week. But look at this, more energy coming into the west coast as we get on into Wednesday and you get this big U-shaped formation here in the jet as we get on in toward midweek. And to me, this signals that we've got a southerly flow. We're going to see a bigger response of moisture coming out of the Gulf. So my expectation as we get on in toward the middle, toward the end of next week, we might see a big storm system with severe weather and uh, some wind here in the central plains, southern plains, and kind of move up, you're going to see kind of a general ridge in the east. And so storm systems are going to track along that ridge kind of like this. You see, there's that kind of ridging pattern with these height lines. So the storm systems track along this. This is where your axis of rain is going to be also along the west coast as well as these systems just continue to punch in. You can see that energy just coming in here. And uh, again, we get another big U shape out here toward Thanksgiving. So here in the west and into the plains, we could see a couple of storm systems move through around Thanksgiving in the east. It's going to be fairly tranquil with mild temperatures. Here's the trough in the west, energy coming into the west coast, keeping you rainy out there and snowy in the higher elevations. Eventually, as the cold air kind of comes in, you get this trough established here in the west, a ridge in the east, cold air is coming in here. And so expect with an active track to start to see the Rockies and Canada and the northwest pick up some snowfall. And as a matter of fact, as we run this out through the next couple of days, Saturday, rain in the northwest, rain in Southern California, snow showers up here in the northeast, and rain showers as well as we get on into Saturday into Sunday. That low pressure comes out of Canada and winds up a little bit, bringing you some wind, snow in the higher elevations up there. Meanwhile, energy continues out west in the Intermountain West toward the Rockies. And uh, it's going to be mostly rain outside of the higher peaks. That storm system winds up and gets away in the northeast as we get to early next week. And here comes that little low pressure that we looked at before, bringing some wet weather through the central or the mid Mississippi Valley and on into the southeast. But look what happens as we get toward the end of the week. Still plenty of energy pushing in out west, but look, we get a big response here with the Gulf being tapped, southerly winds bringing uh, moisture up and that low pressure starts to wind up in the plains. Gets pretty strong as it heads toward the lakes and sends rain and a cold front all into the east and a severe weather threat probably at attendance with that. And there you go over the next couple of weeks, you start to see more blue showing up on the map because cold weather is getting involved. Cold air is uh, getting involved. Here you're Rainfall totals over the next two weeks looking at to be the highest here along the west coast where some areas could pick up two to four, even six inches of rain and or precipitation in the higher elevations out here. But a lot of areas along the coast and just inland expect uh, just expect it to be a rainy period with a few inches of rain out there. And then the next signal would be along the uh, track of that ridge, the arc of that ridge uh, through the Mississippi Valley, Southern Plains up into the Great Lakes. That's where our secondary maximum will be. The GFS agrees with those placements of the footprint of the heaviest rain, so I wanted to show you that too. As far as temperatures go, let's go back and take a look at this. We're starting here. Let's get, get to starting point. There we go. Cool weather in the east and a warm weather out in the central and east uh, western plains into the Rocky Mountains, warmer than normal, but we get another big, that's that punch that the models have been missing, now they're catching on to it, heading into the Great Lakes in the northeast as we get out to uh, Monday into Tuesday, keeping much of the east in the uh, cooler than normal regime, more cool air, cool Pacific air coming into the west with warm air in the middle of the country as we get on out to next week. Out ahead of that next storm system, we're going to see big southerly winds and that will bring in plenty of warm air. And eventually out in time, we get a pretty good response uh, in terms of model agreement around a ridge setting up in the center to the eastern portion of the country and cool air penetrating in to the west, lowering those snow uh, the, those, uh, the snowfall elevations out there. And so we'll see snow coming into the picture as we go over the next couple of days into the weekend. Early next week, we're here on Monday uh, and Tuesday of next week. Not a lot of snow. There's quite a bit here in northern Maine. You guys could pick up quite a bit of snow up here over the next 
several days and uh, especially we get into early next week and maybe see four or six inches of snow up here in the higher elevations and even some snow showers outside of that the rocky mountains and back into the sierra nevadas cascades a little bit of snow over the next uh, several days but really that stuff will pick up in earnest as we go on out toward the end of the run look at this as we get on out toward friday uh, the 21st into uh, saturday and sunday and tuesday of the following week we're just rolling this along you can see the snowpack really start to build out west as the active storm track remains in place cold air just rushing in out of canada with that trough out west and there's the ridge keeping all the snow to the north unfortunately and here's what it looks like if we look at the northern hemispheric view we're looking for snowpack to be built in these areas here we've already got some snow on the ground but we're looking for more snow there to keep our cryosphere charged up so that the air that comes down will be well refrigerated and doesn't modify and again i'm pulling for winter weather if you're not pulling for winter weather then you're rooting against everything i'm saying but let's just pretend like we're all in agreement for winter weather and that's where we'll uh and that, that's how we're proceeding from the presentation of this show okay so that's what we're looking at over the next couple of weeks and again, I'm just I'm just joking around with you, but uh, that's I, I love winter weather. We don't get to see a lot of it in the southeast. It's probably annoying to some people, but uh, that's all right. The weather is what it is. We can't do anything about it. We just talk about it and enjoy what we enjoy. So that's that for the forecast. Now I'm going to show you space weather and uh, another X-class solar flare that came off the sun. Ay, 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 the sunspot that just won't quit. Look at this, another X-class solar flare. This is X4, boy, oh boy, oh boy. And it was... Uh, pretty long in duration in terms of coming down and of course it sent another coronal mass ejection out and off the surface of the sun fortunately that is turned away so watch this uh, is this a boom there it goes you know but you can see that halo kind of come out of it and uh, that's something that came off uh, another solar flare and CME but not that big one the big one comes up right now watch this here it comes uh, da, 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 boom there it is with the halo kind of coming around so we're going to get some of that energy here uh, from that but it fortunately is not earth facing any longer there's another coronal hole stream that's going to come at us from this coronal hole enhancing the solar wind we're coming down from the big solar storm that we had in the magnetosphere response anyway so that's coming down proton flux has come well down as well so we're coming out of solar storm conditions there are the sunspots there's the big one that's caused all the trouble it is turning away and it will make its rotation back around and we'll see if it holds together so far no earthquakes to speak of which is good news hawaii had a little shake out here on the big island but nothing uh, really going on there on the earthquake front and finally the moon we are in a waning crescent now 26.9 percent and headed toward new moon fade the new moon phase on november the 20th okay so by the time we get into thanksgiving we'll be in the first quarter and my friends that is the show for today and so i've got to get you the answer to that weather iq question um fortunately we're not going to expect to see any more aurora uh, generation for the next couple of days but if you're in the southern hemisphere sometimes you see those southern lights and that question today is what is that called what is the southern hemisphere equivalent of the northern lights called and out of all of these possible choices the correct answer is the aurora australis that's what they call the southern lights now you know and by the way one more thing to know check this out see this this hey, let me get on the make sure i'm showing you the right thing here um da -da 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 -da, so you can see it when you turn it around there it is. I don't know if you can see that or not. That is Barney's Coffee. You can order this online. It used to have Barney's Coffee Shops you could walk into, and now Starbucks is just pretty much in caribou. have replaced everything. But uh, Barney's has a coffee called Santa's White Christmas. It is absolutely delicious. If you like flavored coffee at all, it's pretty good. It's got coconuts and chocolate and some vanilla hints and all of that stuff in there. It's very, very good. That is a cold rain recommendation for you. Enjoy it and have a wonderful time drinking it and think of cold rain when you do it. Anyway, that's the show for today, folks. Happy Friday to you. We made it through another week headed to the weekend i hope you have a lot of fun have some good weekend plans in the meantime this is cold rain reminding you weather runs 24 7 but i got you covered right here right now 48 14 take care everybody have a wonderful weekend and god bless